Welcome back. Um, in this section, section 3.11, we'll be talking about some related rates problems. And our first problem, we're going to talk about uh, an expanding circle. So uh, we have this circle, and this circle is expanding at a rate of the area is increasing by one centimeter squared per second. And we're being asked at various times uh, or at various rates of increase of the radius or the circumference, uh, then what is the change in the length of the radius of this circle? So in part A, um, we're asked if this thing, uh, the area is increasing at a rate of one centimeter squared per second, then, uh, and we have a radius of two, then how fast is uh, the, what, at what rate is the radius increasing? So uh, what we need to start out with is we need to have a formula that really takes all these things into consideration or a formula that relates the area to the radius, okay? Those are the two things we really have to work with here are the area and the radius. And so what's an equation that relates those two things together? If you can't figure out the original um, equation here, that makes it much harder. In this case, that formula is fairly straightforward. Uh, we have that the area is equal to uh, pi r squared because we're dealing with a circle. And we know that for a circle, the area of that circle is pi r squared. Now it's time for the related rates piece of this thing, and that is we need to take the derivative of this equation, but we're going to take the derivative not with respect to the variable a, not with respect to the variable r, not with respect to the variable x, but with respect to time. And so we're going to take the derivative of these two guys with respect to time. Okay. So if I take the derivative of the area with respect to time, I'm just going to write the derivative of the area with respect to time, so dA dt. Pi is a constant, and so when I take the derivative of this thing, the constant just says pi. Then I take the derivative of r squared with respect to time. If I take the derivative of r squared with respect to time, I use the chain rule, so I bring down the 2, and I get 2 times r times the derivative of r, which is dr dt. Okay, so now I have three real unknown things here. I have dA dt, I have r, and I have dr dt. And now it's important to again ask the question, so what is it I was trying to find in this problem? And what I'm trying to find is, how is the radius changing? Okay, and the radius changing is how is the radius changing with respect to time? dr dt, the change in the radius with respect to time. So dr dt represents how is the radius changing, and that's what I'm looking for here is dr dt. So this is what we want to know. This is what I'm trying to figure out. What I need then to figure out dr dt is I need to know what's dA dt, or in other words, how is the area changing with respect to time, and I need to know r, what is the radius at that specific time. Both of these things are given to us in part a of this problem. I know what dA dt is. Uh, it's given to me as 1. So I can replace this with 1. And 1 is equal to, I've got 2 pi times r. This is also given to me in part a of this problem. r is given to me to be 2. So we can plug in 2 for r. And what I want to know is dr dt. Now I can just solve for dr dt, and I get that dr over dt is equal to, divide both sides by, let's see, 4 pi, and I get 1 over 4 pi. Now, B 
because this is more of an application problem, I need to use units here. And the way that I always figure out the units on these related rates problems is I just look at my what I'm uh, trying to solve for. In this case, dr over dt. Well, dr, what is r measured in in this problem? r is measured in centimeters. So the top is centimeters. And then I say, and what is time measured in in this problem? In this specific problem, time is measured in seconds. So I can put per second. So it's centimeters per second. And we've got our answer for part A. OK. The only thing that changes, really, uh, for part B of this problem is instead of giving you a specific radius, uh, like 2, as we were given in part A, in part B, instead they say, OK, well, here is the circumference length. And so using that circumference length, I can figure out what the radius would be. And then I can figure out what dr dt is. So in this part of the problem, they're saying, OK, the area is still changing at a rate of 1. And I am still trying to find dr dt. But I don't know yet what r is. I'm giving. Um, that the circumference is 2 centimeters. So given that the circumference is 2 centimeters, what is dr dt? OK, well, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. And if I'm given that the circumference is 2, then I get that 2 is 2 pi r. Or if I solve for r, I get that r is equal to 1 over pi. Okay, so this is the r that I will plug in over here in this equation. So I use this exact same equation again. Take it right from here. I'll write it again. I have dA dt equals pi times 2r times dr dt. But what's dA dt? We already know that's 1. Uh, and then I have 2 pi on the other side times r, and what is r? We know that in this case, r is 1 over pi. So I plug in my 1 over pi times dr dt, which is what I'm trying to figure out. OK? Uh, now just do a little bit of manipulation. These pi's cancel, and I'm left with 1 is equal to 2 dr dt and solve for dr dt, and I get that dr over dt is equal to 1 half. And now if I want to put the units on this thing, I say, OK, what's r measured in in this problem? It's in centimeters. What is t measured in in this problem? It's in seconds. So I'm left with that dr over dt is 1 half centimeters per second. And remember, what is it that we're really figuring out here? What is dr dt? And what is dr dt? It's the change in the radius over time, uh, or it's how much is the radius changing when r is 1 over pi.